Today, we're going to learn how to analyze browser extensions with EXT analysis on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Browser extensions are extremely useful, and we can use them to expand the functionality of the browsers like Firefox and Chrome that we use every day. But we don't always know who's responsible for these browser extensions. And if we want to unpack them to see if there's anything malicious going on underneath, there's a fantastic browser-based extension called EXT Analysis that allows us to take a look at what's going on inside. Now, in order to use it, you'll just need either Firefox or Chrome. And if you get confused, you can check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description for a step-by-step -step guide on how to use it. Now, to proceed, we'll also need an extension we want to analyze. And today, I'm going to use an extension built by a computer science student at my school in order to take a look at what a more amateur-based custom Firefox extension will look like after we begin to analyze it. So let's get started. Now, today, we're going to take a look at EXT analysis. And this is kind of similar to Jupyter Notebook in that it's some Python code that will run, create an interface, and open in a browser window, and be a really interactive experience that allows us to easily use the tool without needing to rely on a particular piece of hardware or an operating system. So it's really cross-platform, easy to install, and easy to use. Now, you can go ahead and download and, uh, and analyze different extensions from the Chrome store, the Firefox store. And if you have the right operating system, you can also do so with currently installed uh, extensions. However, this isn't supported on Mac OS at the moment, so I'm not able to do all of the things that it can do. Now, you can see there's a lot of other different things it can do as well that I'm not going to get into uh, today because I'm just going to go through a basic analysis of a integration that a lot of students use at my school. But if you want to check out some of the more advanced things it can do, you can add an API key and do all sorts of virus total scans that give you lots more information about potentially malicious uh, browser extensions. Now, installing it is super easy. We're going to go ahead and just do a git clone, which will in, uh, download the GitHub repository. So I'll go to my terminal window and just do the git clone. And of course, it already exists because I tried this earlier. And then I'll do cd uh, ext analysis. And then once we're in that folder, we can go ahead and run it. Or sorry, first we can go ahead and install the requirements with a pip3 install. So pip3 install tack r requirements.txt. And this should already be installed. Great. So now if we want to use it, it's really, really easy. We don't need to do much of anything aside from be in the correct folder, call Python, and then actually just run the tool with extanalysis.py. So we're going to copy it here, paste it in terminal because we're lazy. And it'll open, and there we go. We have this really nice interface to work with. It looks very slick, which is cool. And we can also keep track of what's going on in our main window. So it does a little bit of command line stuff in showing us, actually, it shows us exactly here what's being printed to the terminal window. But if we're just here as well, we can see what's going on. So let's take a look at this particular extension. Now, this extension is written by a computer science student I know at my school. And what it's designed to do is overlay the rate my professor uh, score of different teachers onto our uh, course catalog. So it's designed to basically make sure that people who are signing up for classes at our school don't end up with a teacher who has a really terrible score, which is a very, very common problem. So it's in the Google Chrome store, and it is also in the Firefox uh, store. So I'm actually going to go back and take a look at the Firefox extension. And we'll do that one instead, because I've already analyzed the Chrome extension. Oops. Oh, it just does it directly. All right, let's go to the Chrome one then. So in order to load something, we can either, on a supported operating system, load a uh, locally installed extension, which unfortunately, since I've updated my Chrome, this no longer works. Uh, I can try this, but as you can see, I get an error. So instead, we'll go ahead and analyze one from the Chrome Web Store. I can paste the address right here, and we can click on Download and Analyze. And then we'll need to select a name to save the extension as. That's backwards, but that's fine. And we'll download it and analyze. All right, so now we have extension analyzed and report saved under this ID. We can view the analysis. And this is where things really start getting fun. 
So we can see the author is unknown. And if I didn't know the person who produced this, then that would be maybe a problem if I wanted to install this and I didn't know exactly what it was going to do. I can see it's a remote Google Chrome extension. Um, I, it only has one permission. There are three unique domains. It's extracted five different URLs and there's no external JavaScript being loaded. Now, if there was a lot of external JavaScript being loaded, that might be suspicious. Maybe this is a coin miner or something like that. But in this case, uh, we can see that there's really not that much going on here. And if there were a lot of permissions also being requested, that might also be something that is suspicious. So we can see the manifest.json and uh, the description adds rate my, rate my professor integration to PCC's schedule of classes. Very cool. This is very, very popular. And I actually didn't realize so many people used it until I started mentioning it. And uh, it's quite a well-used uh, app or extension at my school. So once we go to the file section, we can see a really cool wiggly graph where if I move some of these things, it they wiggle. Uh, so the visualization here is really cool and we can move around and see what files are linked to each other, uh, it, which is really an interesting way of looking at the different things that are loaded and used in this extension. We can see all the files right here. And if you want to go ahead and take a look at the actual source code, we can just click on the source right here and see all of the different things that are written. And, uh, you can even see the comments that my friend wrote here uh, about why he was doing this and what kind of things uh, he was thinking when he was creating this. So it's a really interesting way to get into the mind of the person who wrote these, because as you can see, there are still different comments here left from production, which can give you an understanding of who wrote this, maybe what their level of professionalism was, and whether or not this is a production sort of thing or this is a homebrewed sort of deal. So we can also see it will beautify selected code or beautify full code. I've actually never clicked on that, but I can see it's actually popping out the parts that are particularly interesting. So that's pretty cool, but I'm not going to use that right now. I'm going to go back to this view. So I can also take a look at the permissions. And this is particularly important because if we want to make sure that there are no suspicious permissions, we can check here to make sure it's not requesting location, webcam, or anything that it shouldn't. This, of course, is just requesting uh, to do a simple request, uh, which seems fine. So I'm not going to dig too much into this because I can't because there's not that much to dig into. If I had a more complicated uh, extension that I was taking a look at, then there would be a lot more here. But for now, we can also go to the URLs and domains and see some of the really interesting stuff that already has been pulled. For one thing, we can extract the, the different domains that this is calling. And we can see that it's calling ratemyprofessor.com, which makes sense. It's calling rmcpcc.com and a Google server. So it looks like all these things uh, for a Chrome extension pretty much makes sense for what it should be contacting. And we can also see that extract it extracted URLs from the files. Now, this is super cool because if there's anything that doesn't belong here, we can very quickly weed it out and be like, hey, why is this making a request to the sketchy website? But in this case, all of the different requests that are being made look pretty much normal for what we expect this to do. And we can see that there's even a description um, basically in the file name of what it's trying to do. And we can do a who is search. So if we want to do a who is analysis, we can see that uh, pccrmp.com was registered through Google. We can see uh, who exactly registered it, which in this case they had privacy protection on, so it actually doesn't really help us that much. But if this was registered by an, by an individual that actually used their real name, then that would be a really interesting way of learning a bit more about who owns this domain and if it's involved in any sketchy business. We can also see a virus total report, which means if we click on it, then it unfortunately doesn't have the virus total API. But if we had it, we would be able to see if this has been involved in any malware or anything like that. Now, finally, this will parse through all the files and extract as much information as it can. In this case, it didn't find any IP addresses, Bitcoin addresses, email addresses, or com um, but it did find some comments. But in the files, if there was any of these things, let's say maybe a, a Bitcoin address that linked back to a wallet that looked like it was a Bitcoin miner, or some IP addresses that were flagged by VirusTotal as being suspicious, then we would be able to identify them here. Now we can also see that it's extracted comments from the various files. So we can see, as I said, kind of what the person who was coding this was thinking. Uh, we can see console log files. And here we go, we can actually see, yes, comments that were made by the author. So if you want to see things that were basically left in from production and maybe identify who made this based on the way that they coded it or the comments they left, 
this can be a really welcome piece of information that's automatically extracted from any extension that we load. So with this, we can dig into pretty much whatever we want. We can analyze the source code itself, or we can just take a look at some of the more interesting things that are uh, analyzed and extracted automatically. But this is a great cross-platform tool to be able to dig into pretty much any sort of browser extension for Firefox or Chrome. I really like EXT analysis because it's similar to Jupyter Notebook in how easy it is to set up cross-platform to just open a browser window and begin analyzing any sort of browser extension you want. Now you can use this to look for any suspicious behavior, keep yourself safe while installing extensions, or do malware analysis if you are in that kind of job. But in general, this sort of portability makes it a really easy to use tool if you're suspicious about a particular extension or you just want to see how it works under the hood, including looking at the source files. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. If you have any ideas for future episodes, you can send me a message on Twitter at Cody Kinsey. And if you get confused, you can check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description for any troubleshooting you might need. That's all we have for this episode, and we'll see you next time.